Oh, that's so heavy. So I recently made a video about this rather large, <laughs> heavy laptop that I designed using an Intel NUC, an old laptop screen, and a large battery. Now, a lot of people like the idea, but I can understand it's very heavy and it's very expensive for what it is. So I've been on the lookout for a smaller project that's simpler, cheaper, you know, more people can get into. So this is my new design. It's a lot smaller and there you have it. Inside at the minute, we are using a B-Link AP34. This is an Intel N3450 processor. So not a very high spec processor, but more powerful than you would get in a lot of tablets which use something like an Intel Aptum processor. And I've just got a 90 watt power bank here. And on top of that, we have this keyboard that I found. You can find these on eBay for quite cheap. And um, if I can still find a link, I'll put it on the link below. But yeah, these are about 10 pounds. Well, let me just turn this on and you can see how it's working. So there you go. Right now you can see that the battery's actually running quite low. So in a minute, I'm just gonna shut it down a sec and I'll show you the best thing about this is it can run on basically almost any power bank, very cheap ones anyway. Whereas my previous build required a battery that could give out at least 20, uh, 19 volts. This one will run on most five volt, convert, uh, five volt power banks as long as you have a five volt to 12 volt converter. Now there are some drawbacks to that, but I'll show, I'll show you that in the meantime. Okay, so like I said, the battery's running low, but the main thing about this battery is large battery like this, you can get about 10 to 14 hours of runtime on it, which is fantastic really. And the best thing is you can just swap it out, which I'll show in a second. And this is all Lego, by the way, this case is all Lego. There's no glue or anything like that. It's all held together just by Lego. And the hinge, hinge was done with just a few of these poles and such. And in terms of modu uh, modularity, it's pretty much as modular as you can get because all you need to do is take a few Lego pieces off and it all comes apart. So like, you probably wanna just give it a bit of a squeeze now and then to make sure that it's not coming apart. Now, one thing I would say about this is I've got this screen here. It's a seven inch screen that I found on Amazon for about 50 pounds. They're not always the best in terms of quality. You can get slightly more expensive ones that have IPS displays. If you can find one for a good price, get one of them because these TFT displays, if that's what it is, they have not got very good viewing angles whatsoever, so. But, you know, that's the benefit of this project is if I wanted to, I could very easily take the screen off and put the more expensive IPS panel in there. And in terms of changing the battery over, it's as simple as this. It's dead. So, plug it in. Also, another thing about the screen is it's really squeaky. When it turns on and off, it makes this really weird squeaky sound isn't the best but again it's only 50 pounds from amazon so yeah let's turn it on there we go and there you go we have another 10, ba 10 hours battery in the meantime i'm going to stick this battery on charge i could also have a battery like this which gives you a which gives you a number and how much power is left so these are the ways you work around it it's not it's the problem with these mini pcs is apart from a laptop is it doesn't have that direct connection to know how much power there is left in the battery so you do have to put the extra bit of effort into you know, check on how much battery you've got left. But, you know, hopefully in the future we'll find a way of getting around that. Now, I would definitely advise against getting something like a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse as your main driver for this. If you can find one that has a USB dongle, um, Bluetooth ones can sometimes tend to drop out and you have to restart them sometimes or reconnect them. So it's not the snappiest thing around, but with a little bit of patience, there we go, we're into a video here. So not getting any drop frames there whatsoever. The main thing is just full screening and going back from full screen, it can take a little bit of time there to resize the window. Into the side of this case, I've built a port here so you can easily still get access to the USB ports. Um, and the front here, you can see the lights, so you can see if the computer's on. You know, aesthetics, it's a little bit messy with the wires, but you know, there's only so much you can do sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. So with a computer, it's only running on this much wattage, which is about between five and 10 watts. You're not gonna get the highest amount of performance, especially when it comes to games. So right now I'm about to run up Doom 3. Things like that, your, your classic PC games, we're running this totally fine, like your early quakes and stuff like that. This should be perfectly fine for it, but you're not gonna get any 
AAA games running on here from today. Like you won't be getting Red Dead Redemption 2 running this at all, probably. <laughs> you can run any Windows app on here. So any Windows programs you can run on this. Now in terms of performance, you aren't gonna get the best, but if you want to do things like handbrake to compress videos or do simple video editing, photo editing, stuff like that, should be fine. So yeah, another good thing about this is because it's running full Windows, you can plug in your Xbox controllers. So this is Doom 3 BFG edition, so you get all the benefits of uh, widescreen, slightly better visuals and such. So we're gonna try it just in the campaign now. Now, I got hold of this computer two years ago. We bought this from a little brother to do his basic computing on. So if you do his homework on and stuff like that, and just watch YouTube videos and you know have something to use a computer with. Um, why has that gone off? So the way this works is this is powered usually by a 12 volt power supply. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using a five volt to 12 volt converter. But what that does mean is if you plug in too many peripherals, it might sometimes over draw power from the battery and shut everything down, which is what's just happened then. It's just too much power for it to draw out of the single USB port here. So I've also found that's another way because I tried to copy some files over with an external hard drive and that could shut down the computer as well because it's just too much power being drawn from the battery and the battery cannot give that much converting from five volts to 12 volts. So this solution's great, but you'd want to make sure there was enough power being sent to the computer. Now you can get around this actually. Something like this, a couple of these would be a really good solution for this. So I could run the computer from this and this is a sort of DIY eBay power bank kit. But what it does have is a 12 volt out on it. So that is good up to 36 watts apparently. So you could get a direct DC cable straight into the DC port of this rather than converting from five volts to 12 volts. And that should mean you have enough power to run power banks and all peripherals you need to the computer then because there's, this only uses five watts to 10 watts or such. This is 30 watts just the only thing you're not going to get is the same amount of time on this. This would only last about five, six hours or so because it's only got the three batteries in there. These go for about six, seven quid, these enclosures. So you can get some spare batteries, get a few enclosures, and you can just have some of these. You can get larger power banks that do have 12 volt outs on them. Anything that has 12 volts out should be able to work with a computer that runs on 12 volts. So that's another way of doing it. I'm just doing it this way because everyone has access usually to a five volt power bank and then these 5 volt to 12 volt adapters or cables about 5 or something like that so that's the cheapest way for me to find to do it another bit of background about this computer is that as well as being very small low powered and simple it was also very cheap so this was uh, we got this for 150 pounds two years ago and they're still around about that they're maybe about a bit cheaper but generally around that now they have brought out more recent models that are slightly faster but generally if you see something that's like B-Link Generally, if it's between 100 and 200 pounds, they're all quite similar in terms of performance. As long as it has full windows on there and it's not running anything like an Atom processor, you should be okay. So yeah, so there are some games um, that you can run on this uh, that are quite recent. So this is Rocket League. And the reason you can play this is because it's very well optimized. Like I have to have all the settings on basically zero <laughs> to run it. Um, but considering this is a £150 PC that runs without any fans on an adapter from a power bank and then running Rocket League on it, I think that's pretty cool. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, things like Rocket League and, and 2D indie games should run on it perfectly fine. I got Sonic Mania on here, that runs perfectly fine as well. Anything like that should run great. Now, I'm not selling this as the system, you know, the B-Link AP34 computer under here is a very low powered system. But again, the reason it's great is because it's inexpensive, comes preset with Windows, and it's better than a lot of other options. So your other options here will be something like a Raspberry Pi computer, which I've tried and it works well. So you could run a Raspberry Pi from this, but a Raspberry Pi, as everyone knows, is a very low power machine that even struggles to play YouTube videos. You could get something like an Android box or something like that. The options are completely open to you. You can put in whatever system you want in this. You could load Linux on there and you get really good results. There's not many people I know making modular Windows machines. 
it's been done with Raspberry Pis before and been done with Linux machines, but in terms of modular Windows machines, it doesn't tend to happen because once you get past the point of a tablet processor, it starts using more power than is worth not getting a laptop for, I guess. Cool. So now that I've shown you a few games on here, let's take it apart and I'll show you um, another setup you can do with these parts. So this is about half as thick as Mentel Nook. And it's a little bit longer on the sides. Screen, computer, power bank, keyboard. Try an experiment now to see if we can run peripheral some PC using a 12 volt power supply. So this should provide enough power to run a hard drive and controllers and such. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the screen powered from the computer so it's all being powered from the same DC cable here. All right, we have action there. Cool. So let's push this even further. Let's try the external hard drive. A USB dongle so we can plug in more USB devices into the other port. And I'll plug a controller into it. Yeah, it seems to be working. And there you have a full case computer. So the benefits of this is that you can use any size case. You can use a slightly chunkier case. You'll definitely be able to fit the Intel Nook in there and a larger power bank and a larger screen. So for many of you, this might be more of a satisfying option because this is definitely something that you're more likely going to want to take to coffee shop or the like. So it's not the best performance in the world. I'd say it's similar to like between the original Xbox and 360. Somewhere between that in terms of performance. You may be looking at this and thinking, well, if it's the same specs as between an Xbox and an Xbox 360, then why wouldn't you get something like a Nintendo Switch? which, you know, is smaller, more portable. This Nintendo Switch is about, you know, between 250 and 300 pounds. And the whole of this setup is about 300 pounds or less. So yeah, you would make, you have a point in that you could probably get a Nintendo Switch over this. Now the thing about this, what you can't do a Nintendo Switch is you can't run Windows apps. This is a full Windows system and it's a fully modular as well. So if I went online and there was a new system that was more powerful. I could sell this one and then easily just slot in the new one. As I said before, if I found a better screen, I could you know, adjust this Lego here and put in the new seven inch screen. I could make the whole thing bigger. I can take this out and put this in my other case with the larger screen, you know? All of them benefits is what it's about. This isn't about meant to be the, the sleekest, most powerful thing. The point of it is that you control what level you want. So here we have a 150 pound computer, a 20 pound power bank, a 50 pound seven inch screen, and 10 pounds for the keyboard, and maybe another 10 pounds for mis miscellaneous wires. So for under 230 quid, you're getting a full Windows experience that you can completely adjust and make your own, you know? Uh, you could build this whatever you want. You can change the entire system. Like I've, I've only built this out of Lego here, but you can make the whole thing out of wood. Put all this in something like a flight case, which is a lot sleeker and nicer. So you could do that if you wanted to as well. This isn't about, you know, competing with 1,000 pound plus laptops. It's about taking back control on what you want in a laptop without having to spend ridiculous amounts to get modularity from other sellers. There are some companies that make modular laptops in which you only have to, the only upgrades you can get are for that specific laptop. These are all completely random components that aren't made to work with each other, but they do. And the best thing is that anyone could make this at home. Now, 
again, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate, this isn't what everyone wants. No one wants a four inch thick laptop. You know, it, it's, it's a conversation piece. It's like, oh, just let me open my computer. Oh wait, it's made out of Lego. <laughs> you know, it's not something you'd uh, do all your work on, but just to have as an extra computer around the house, you know, something to run videos from or just to mess around with as a project, it's great for that. And hopefully this can sort of carry on as well. Like what I'd love to see in the future is more compatibility of USB-C cables, being able to connect the battery to the computer with a USB-C cable and another USB-C cable to connect the, the computer to the screen. Now we're starting to see this already, but in terms of the voltages and compatibility, it's very early days and we're not seeing anything that's easy to put together yet. Anyway, this is me signing off.